Hey guys, today I'm in the shop. I gotta make some rear tie rods and spacers for an SW20 MR2 for Sarah and Tuned. So we're gonna get after it. Um, I'm gonna make them all from scratch using some stock I bought from IMS. All right, so the first thing I gotta do is remove this spherical bearing from the knuckle because I have to machine a piece that presses into this. I'm gonna try to hammer it out first with just a hammer and a socket. If that doesn't work, I'm gonna have to go to the air chisel or maybe the press, we'll see. I have to make has to be exactly this size. So if I can find my tools here, one of these drawers has all the measuring stuff in it. There it is. I need to mic this out, see how big it is. That looks like one inch, 413 and a half. So I don't know that I'll be able to hold five tenths on my lathe. In fact, I know I can't. But we're going to try. 1 inch 60 thousandths. And uh, I might actually go to double check the knuckle here to see what size it is. Looks like 1 inch 37 and a half. We're going to make it the size of the knuckle only because I don't want this protruding out. Um, and interfering with actually bolting the thing together. So I picked up this piece of inch and a half uh, cold rolled. It's probably just 1018 cold rolled, which doesn't machine the best, but it's cheap and it's what I have readily available at uh, my local metal supplier. But um, this diameter won't fit through the spindle on my lathe, so I can't do all the operations in the lathe. I'm going to make them two inches long so that I have some meat to catch in the jaws of the chuck. Unfortunately, that's going to waste like an inch of stock, but I don't really have a choice with the equipment that I have. It's just, it's just not going to happen. So. All right, I'm going to change my chuck out here to the three jaw, only because it's not that critical for holding dimensions when you indicate it in just as long as it stays in the three jaw. Um, unfortunately, the three jaw that I have is super old and wore out and bell mouthed. So it really doesn't hold tolerance if you, uh, if you remove it from the chuck. But as long as we do everything in the chuck, we'll be okay. I need to make sure I have about an inch and a quarter sticking out and that should be plenty for what we gotta do. Inch and a quarter-ish, give or take. So what I usually do is I loosen it a little bit and give it a just a spin to make sure that it's actually straight on in the three jaw. And then uh, we'll face that off. Turning tool and a cutoff tool, parting tool. got about 10 thousandths left to take off before I'm at final diameter, but this piece is now warm to the touch because I was machining it. So if you measure it warm, when you're doing a press fit, the tolerance is critical. So measuring it warm will cause you to miss your, your goal. So I gotta wait for that to cool off and then I'll machine it to final diameter and then we'll drill it and then part it off. One inch for 13, so I'm under a half thousandth. All right, so it needs to be one inch 037 long. I'm gonna lock down the carriage here so that it can't move. Get the haunted door. and I face the end off. Now I'm gonna drill and tap. One end's left hand thread and the other one's right hand thread so you can turn this like a tie rod, like it would be from the factory, only this one's gonna have heim joints on the end of it. Since it's extruded 60, 61, 7 8 nominal, it's actually a little bigger than 7 8 so it doesn't quite fit in a 7 8 collet. So I gotta chuck this up in the lathe with a live center over here in the tailstock. And then I'm gonna take a skim cut off of this the whole length. Number one, to clean it up and make it look prettier. 
and number two so that it's actually seven eighths of an inch and fits in the collet I have, which you'll see when I go to do the milling operation. All right, so now I'm over here in my little baby mill and I've got to mill the wrench flats on the end of this tie rod so that you can actually get a wrench on it and tighten it up when it's in the car. So what I'm doing is putting it in the vise and then I'm just using my finger right here, which you can feel a very minute change in surface height. So I just feel until this collet block is level with the edge of my vise and then I mount it down and then I'm gonna zero it to the end of this and then I'm gonna zero it to the edge. I'm gonna take a 16th of an inch off each side of seven eighths. So it'll be a three quarter inch wrench that'll fit this tie rod. So I just machined these wrench flats on it and broke all the edges with a file so they're not sharp anymore. So now I'm gonna flip it around in the collet block, do the same thing on the mill, a deeper, and then I'll put it back in the lathe and just hit the whole thing with some Scotch-Brite. Just to take all any sharp edge or burr or anything off, it'll look like this when I'm done. So I just got done polishing this up in the lathe with the Scotch-Brite. So it's all shiny and pretty now. So I'm just gonna screw the rod ends in it. Didn't get the right one. And then I'm on to the next pit, which I, uh, I have to build the brackets that bolt onto the knuckle of the car that this presses into and then a little bracket bolts on either side of it and that's going to hold this heim joint. I got to build those and then I got to build misalignment spacers for where they bolt to the rear subframe of the car. Right now I'm making heim joint misalignment spacers to go where the tie rod ends bolt to the rear subframe and this is a little drawing I made of them just so I can keep track of what I'm doing on the lathe. So I got a piece of one inch round stainless steel stock chucked up in the lathe my first process is going to be to face it off to get a true face, and then I'm going to turn down the outer diameters. So the next step is to center drill this so that I can uh, have a good reference point to start the new drill bit. I gotta drill a hole all the way through this for a 12 mil bolt that has to center in there. The last step in this process is to now part this off because the hole's drilled through the center. I just want to show you guys some of the trials and tribulations with stainless. I've been trying to make these heim joint misalignment spacers out of stainless for Sarah because the heim joints are stainless so they'll match and, and still look nice. And stainless work hardens as you do it. So you have to be pretty vigilant in, in tool and feed pressure. Um, anytime it rubs, it, it work hardens and then uh, you're kind of screwed. So I'm going to show you that real quick. So I was trying to part this off in the lathe I finished one of the spacers and uh, unfortunately I wasn't careful with my feed pressure and it rubbed and work hardened. So then I added a bunch of tool pressure and when it finally dug in and caught, it uh, broke the end off my parting tool. So um, I don't know. Now I gotta see if I can salvage this or if I just scrapped apart and gotta remake it. Search for a piece of steel that's gonna work for this. That's too thick. <laughs> it's too wide. <laughs> that's aluminum. That's aluminum. That's too thin. Pay dirt. So I got the eggplant and the vise here. I'm gonna cut it off with the bandsaw.
So what I'm doing now is just putting these plates in the mill here and drilling some holes in them. These are just temporary. They're not supposed to look super pretty. They're not going to look super finished. Um, they're literally just to find out exactly where we need to put them to correct the bump steer on her MR2. So I'm going to drill some holes here. And then once I get all four of those done, I'm going to mill a slot in them so we can adjust it. Next step is I gotta go in here with the end mill and just mill a slot in this plate. All right, so here's the finished product. The tie rod ends with the spacers that go in the body, the spacers that get pressed into the knuckle, and then these brackets, which get bolted either side of the spacer to set the bump steer. And these are adjustable just for now. These are completely temporary, which is why I didn't bother cleaning them up or rounding off the corners. Uh, they're to measure the, how much bump steer we have, get it adjusted, and then figure out the actual distance I need to make the real brackets. This is my first real attempt at trying to make a YouTube video. So if you guys could let me know how I did down in the comment section, uh, that would be much appreciated. If you wanna see the follow-up to this and see how they go on the car, you should check out Sarah Antoon's YouTube channel. The link will be down in the description. Thanks guys, I'll catch you later.